one of the things that we're looking to do is making sure that we are providing very specific and tailored types of compute instances and GPUs for the target verticals. So media and gaming, obviously a target vertical for us, and that's why we're excited about this specific GPU that we're bringing to the market. Hi, this is your host, Abdul Bharatiya, and welcome to TFLS Talk. Today we have with us once again, Sean Michaels, Vice President of Product Management of Cloud Computing at Akamai. Sean, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me again, Swabna. Yeah, it's my pleasure to host you. And you folks made a big announcement uh, related to GPU. So let's just quickly talk about this uh, announcement. So this week, what we're going to announce is the availability of new NVIDIA GPUs to the market. Specifically, we're bringing the NVIDIA RTX 4080A class, which is a class of computing that is optimized for media and gaming workloads. Excellent, thank you. Uh, and if I ask you, what is the driver behind this uh, announcement? What are some of the challenges, pain point, whether it's technological or it could be cost and scale related that media and gaming companies face that kind of led to this offering? So one of the things that we're seeing in the media and gaming space right now is a drive to profitability. And so one of the things that helps with these new GPUs is by improving the amount of performance or improving the amount of transcoding capabilities or increasing how much transcoding you can do off an individual machine, we can dramatically help reduce the cost of preparing content for those media and gaming companies. Was there any specific reason to choose this family of NVIDIA cards? The reason why we chose these NVIDIA cards specifically was really has to do with price for performance and with cost. So um, if you think about it, not all GPU is created equal, and these GPU actually are kind of purpose-built to be able to handle decoding and encoding of audio content. It has some special integrations with things like the AV1 codec. So it makes it a great option for customers who are looking to do any type of video, audio, um, image and rendering. As consumers, you know, of whether it's gaming or, you know, TV content or media or movie, what kind of impact it will have end users? One of the things that I think this will impact for end users is the ability to kind of deliver the high um, performance or the kind of the, the high quality performance that they would expect from a streaming service. And I think the, the real value that we're bringing to the table is the two things. So one, if you think about the cost to create a 4K stream, it makes it very expensive. And, and uh, moving to these GPUs, we can actually do more in terms of the amount of content we can transcode on an individual device. The second is when you combine this technology with Akamai's delivery network and kind of the, the, the backbone and private network that we've created, what it allows us to do is provide a ubiquitous kind of high quality 4K experience to more users across the globe. So if you were somebody who in the past may be able to, um, you know, to your point, may have seen kind of like um, the colors off or maybe you're not always getting the 4K stream, what this allows us to do by combining kind of Akamai's highly distributed cloud computing capabilities along with our CDN network, it allows us to more cost effectively deliver that uh, ubiquitous experience to a broader audience, which is ultimately what gaming companies and media companies are looking for. Average people, when we talk about GPUs, they mostly relate to either gaming or media production, but GPUs nowadays are also helping offload a lot of you know burden that CPUs have. Uh, so, so can you also talk about through this? How are you also kind of making uh, computing more like more efficient, more powerful, which may go beyond just rendering videos and gaming? I think what you'll see from Akamai in general is that one of the things that we're trying to do with our cloud is target very specific verticals and very specific use cases. And to your point, GPU has the ability to pack more density and more capabilities in the machine, but not all GPU is created equal. So we're looking at these GPUs GPUs today very specifically for that kind of video and transcoding use case. But I think what you can see from Akamai is two things. The first thing that I think you'll see from us moving forward is the addition of additional GPU capabilities in the future. So you could, see, you could assume that we will be moving to additional classes of the NVIDIA cards and the NVIDIA chipsets really focused on potentially um, instances for uh, AI and ML inferencing, um, uh, probably not going to get into the large language 
language modeling. But as we go after verticals, making sure that we continue to have those compute instances and those GPUs that are needed for the verticals and the use cases that we're targeting. So I think that's one. I think the other piece is with our move to the edge and with our move to kind of the distributed computing uh, capabilities that we're bringing to market, the other thing that you can see is even in the CPU world, there's just going to be a push for density. So the further away that you get away from the core, the more that you're going to see the need to push heavier and heavier computing instances, but at the same time, space and power become a constraint. And I think GPU is the nice first kind of manifestation because it puts really heavy compute capabilities and it reduces your power. And so you can get more capabilities in a smaller space. But I think you'll see with Akamai and others will be innovating in that space to figure out how you can get more density to the edge. A few weeks ago, Akamai also announced a partnership with Neural Magic. Though you made it clear, you know that LLMs and Gen AI that can uh, different kind of use cases. Uh, is there any kind of you know relationship between these two announcements? Will they cater to each other as well? One of the things that you'll see from Akamai and one of our approaches that we're taking to the cloud is that there is no one size fits all solution. So on one hand, we're very excited about the opportunity with Neural Magic. Um, what their capabilities and what they allow us to do is they allow us to do um, inferencing for large language uh, for LLMs and try to move inferencing to the edge while using standard kind of CPU technology. And there is a class for customers where that type of a solution and that type of implementation is going to work really, really well. However, for whatever reason, we have other customers who are moving away from the CPU-based model, you know, building their applications, building their models in order to work on GPU. And what we want to make sure is that we are not inhibiting or prohibiting their adoption of our platform by being too narrow in one way or the other. So Neural Magic, very excited about that opportunity, very excited about that partnership. But at the same time, we also want to make sure that we're stocking our shelves with the, the products and the services that customers are looking for when they're looking to bring um, kind of AI inferencing to market. Can you share what kind of driver use cases this will enable or you know people will be able to leverage? The use case in the model that we're bringing out today or the, the specific GPU that we're announcing today is really focused on a couple of key areas. It's fantastic for video uh, transcoding, whether that is live or on demand. It's great for audio. Um, we see it with virtual uh, and augmented reality. So, uh, so any type of uh, video and rendering processing. Um, a lot of customers interested it for game engines. So getting game engines closer to the user in order to be able to improve the experience and be able to get more games on, a, on an individual machine. But we're also seeing a little bit of a, in some uh, lightweight modeling for AI ML, so, so just the inferencing, so not the training of models, but like once a model has been trained, kind of pushing it and caching it towards the edge. Um, a little bit in data analysis. So we have a couple of customers who are kicking the tires on um, doing data analysis and some more uh, scientific type computing. And then additionally, some um, high performance computing requirements. Uh, so like, again, going back to kind of things like gaming engines where you need four gigahertz processors or you need a bit of a, a higher um, a higher type of a, a, a throughput uh, or a higher frequency. So those are some of the areas where you'll see um, their customers leaning in. When it comes to this content, are you also seeing any trend where see, hey, we will see a lot of explosion of this, uh, you know, not only bigger size of content, but VR content. Of course, Apple came up with Vision Pro, Samsung is also. So we are going to see a lot of, you know, this, you know, heavy, you know, data usage there. Uh, so, because when I talk to Akamai, I do see, first of all, you folks predate a lot of technologies that we talk about. And then with Gecko, you are also now building the, the for the future. So what kind of use cases that you're seeing are emerging where this will very well help those use cases to kind of, you know, pick up steam? Yeah, and so I want to make sure that we we kind of thread the needle on these particular use cases in general or this particular GPU model and then kind of the architecture in general. So again, I think what we are seeing in terms of the broader trend and what let us bring to Gecko and what kind of drove our approach to cloud computing in general is just the notion that we expect the the what gets processed at the edge and what gets processed in a distributed computing region uh, in distributed computing locations to simply increase in terms of the density and complexity. Um, when I started working at Akamai, a video file that we would deliver to an end user, so like a full-length movie would be 
you know, 500 megabytes would be like uh, uh, the average size of the movie. Now, six gigs, seven gigs, eight gigs. I mean, just the exponential growth in terms of file size. And what we're seeing is that as you have things like Fortnite and as you have kind of like these more immersive virtual reality experiences, the amount of data and the amount of processing that's being required to get closer to the user in order to drive latency needs is just growing exponentially. And so I think what you'll see is, it, like with Akamai, is a whole trend towards getting density closer to the user in order to be able to kind of unlock the, those experiences. And we can see it in everything from what I'd say consumer generated applications. So um, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, just what I'd call the, the exponential growth and the complexity of multiplayer online games. Um, real-time streaming uh, uh, application instances. You can imagine situations where you're going to want more density and more processing as you get into things like sports betting. So those are all kind of consumer-related experiences. But then you also have problems like smart cities and smart trucking and smart manufacturing, where the amount of data that needs to be processed and the amount of kind of data that you want to send to these models in order to make intelligence decisions it's just going to increase over time. And so I think this is going to be an evergreen problem for the next decade of trying to figure out how you get uh, compute density and how you get data management to data management services and data in general to these you know highly efficient and evolving applications. I remember when Linode was an independent company, they came up with you know GPU offering. Are you leveraging any of those technologies, or this is something totally new that Akamai is doing to address some of these uh, use cases? I would say this is an extension of what uh, um, Linode was already doing. So they had GPUs in market. What this is is kind of an evolution and kind of again the notion of making sure that we are getting tailored solutions into to fit the tailored verticals. Um, so we are leveraging a lot of Linode's existing components. When we make these available, it will be through standard Terraform integrations, standard Ansible integrations, standard APIs. So we're leveraging a lot of Linode's developer experience and kind of ease of use, which is one of the reasons why we acquired them. Um, but what we're bringing to the table is now making sure that these are being deployed in our updated data centers and kind of on our updated backbone so that we can provide that holistic, global, kind of high performance experience that customers have come to know from Akamai. As you're saying, you know, this offering is specific for a specific kind of use case. But, you know, when we talk about Gen AI, you know, I mean, GPUs play a very big role there. Do you have any plans? Of course, you may or may not be able to share at this point where you will bring a lot of capabilities to address some of those use cases also. Yeah, it's a great question, Swapno, and the answer is absolutely. So one of the things that we're looking to do is making sure that we are providing very specific and tailored types of compute instances and GPUs for the target verticals. So media and gaming, obviously a target vertical for us, and that's why we're excited about this specific GPU that we're bringing to the market. However, we are also very um, interested and excited uh, in AI and ML inferencing. So one of the ways that we will solve that problem is with the partnership via Neural Magic um, and their ability to kind of optimize CPU for those use cases. However, again, we also have a class of customers who are very interested in leveraging GPU for that um, for those opportunities. And you can absolutely imagine that in the future, Akamai will be rolling out additional GPUs or additional variants of the GPUs in order to be able to address those very specific use cases. So this isn't a, a one announcement where Akamai is launching one GPU and we're kind of finished you can imagine that we will be continuing to increase the diversity of instance types that we bring to the market, as well as the diversity in the types of GPUs we bring to handle those types of use cases. When we look at cloud, uh, when it came out, it was like to, in a way, democratize computing, storage, networking. When we look at this offering, are you also kind of making these capabilities more accessible to developers? More, or if you look at, you know, how are you democratizing, making things more accessible 
to those who need of course we can look at very huge media companies they have all the resources but it can also empower a lot of you know other developers who do want these capabilities but they cannot afford them because the pricing is killing or availability yeah i think that's a great question swap no and i think one of the things that we tried to do when spe selecting this specific gpu was making sure that we were uh, selecting a GPU type that would allow us to bring GPU to the market that would appeal to a very broad audience. So while we believe that this GPU has very broad um, uh, enterprise capability within the big media companies, and you know we've done a lot of testing with those companies, our plan is to bring it uh, to market at a price point that could be handled by the average kind of consumer. Um, and it's not too different from the price point that we were selling GPU in the past. So we were very very selective about how we went, a pro a, a, went about this process in terms, in terms of making sure that we were delivering the right performance for the right value and trying to create an entry point into the marketplace with our price point that wouldn't alienate um, many of our existing customers. Sean, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this novel. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again, you know, as you gave us some hint, you know, some, some things on the pipeline. Uh, so thanks for all those uh, great insights. And uh, I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Swapnell. I always appreciate the opportunity.